Lord, I 
up on God because he's never gave up on any of us. No, he hasn't. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. God, we thank you for this day, for allowing us to see another Father's Day. We pray blessings over every father that is with their family today and taking care of their children. Pray, oh God, for our communities, for our churches. And we're thankful for your keeping power. Bless this preaching moment now. We'll give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, and I'll say happy Father's Day to all of you that are watching our live stream today. We are so happy that you have joined us in worship. Grab your Bibles and notice with me from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15. I'll lift up a few verses there, beginning at verse 11. The Word of God declares, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all there, he arose there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a, a citizen of that country and sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough? and to spare, and I will perish with hunger. I will arise, go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto our God. This morning, for the few moments that we have to share on this Father's Day, I want to talk to the sons of the family and admonish you to stay in the house. I'm going to say stay in the house. Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. This text is probably one of the most popular biblical texts to teach the, the grace of God's acceptance, but also the unfortunate slide that can take place in a person's life. The text, this narrative tells of a man who had two sons and the youngest by asking for his inheritance while his father was still living could be interpreted as him saying to his father, I wish you were dead. His father surprisingly gave it to him and the son, we're told, immediately runs off for an extended season of contradictory living. He wastes what was given to him, living wild and free and reckless. He violates his Jewish heritage with who he hangs with and what he does while he is hanging with them. And he ends up so low that he is strongly considering filling his belly with the pig feed. He has an aha moment and decides to go back home with the intent to beg for mercy and hopefully receive relief as a hired servant. He's surprised to discover, however, that his father receives him back as a son, restoring to him the home, restoring to him 
the relationship and the status that he has wasted. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but all of us ought to be able to tell Lord God, thank you. Because you restored us after we wasted so much of our life. Of course, Jesus is teaching the far-reaching nature of God's forgiveness, the power of God's grace, the danger of human sin, the slide that comes from human selfishness, the distance that comes with human conceit and arrogance. But then also it teaches us the beauty of human restoration. What scares me about the parable that Jesus shares in the lives we all live is how easy it is to get so far away from the Father's house, so distant from normal to have allowed, created, or caused so much space between one's life and the God who provides shelter, protection, and provision. Now, I know this story is centered on how to get back home when you've wandered, and, 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 and I celebrate that. But, but, but equally as important is how did this son get so far out there in the first place? But, but can I tell you that the very heart of the gospel is that God will always let you come back from distance. It's the heart of the gospel that drifting is not so defeating that you can't redirect back to the will of God. This is the hope that we must undergird all of our sliding lives. And I don't care how much you love Jesus or how long you've been saved or how long you've been a member of the church or wed to holiness. Wandering is peppered in every human story. Uh, another way to say that is all of us have done something in our past. The, the amount of distance, the length of the stay in the place called gone, and, and what one does while gone may vary, but what is guaranteed is the truth this parable teaches. Children of the Father have their seasons where they want to abandon privilege. They want to forsake relationship. They want to become blind to the goodness of the Father, and they want to become numb to the love uh, and, and they grab what entitlement demands and run off and waste a portion of their lives. I know I'm coming down somebody's street. I, I want to suggest today what might prevent the frequency of this and what might slow down its pace or shorten its length is not just knowing that any time any place or under any circumstance that you can go back home and the father will accept and restore you but but also i want you to understand that just how uh, you got so far away from from the father's house in the first place how did firm nose become shaky maybes god help me how did strong spiritual disciplines become flesh feeding allowances and when did sin become more exciting than holiness god help me what do you do when you have been had access to what you don't have integrity to manage god help me we celebrate his comeback in this narrative but maybe we ought to study how far away uh, he started sliding in the first place it, because it's frustrating to be in the center of God's will and want to be in a different place God help me but but now the inheritance has been wasted and, and the, the, the choices have been made and the loss is too great and the frustration is so mounted on the seat of my emotions and you almost feel like you're too far gone now to even and get your life back together or attempt to fix all of this brokenness I've created around myself. Have you ever paid any attention to how casual you are in the kingdom today versus how excited you were in the kingdom when you first got saved? Somebody say we need to go back to the Father's house. Now, I know the big announcement that fills the air today is the grace of God that, that lets you come back home, but could we prevent some of the 
the slide if we could really accept what got us away from the father's house in the first place. So, so I ask you today, what has uh, you so unsettled that God is no longer enough? How, how, how does the goodness of the father's house become so normal that it can't stop you from daydreaming and fantasizing about life away from such provision and privilege? What is it about your life that makes you hungry for wondering when you are so full of sufficiency? What has happened that you can be uh, no longer, uh, that you can be uh, no longer thankful for what you have and thankful to the one who gave it to you in the first place? When, when this young son gets away from his father's house, he gets so sick of of money and users and freeloaders and takers that that these become the last thing on his mind when his life begins to sink he had nurtured these by allowing needy users love off of his dysfunction whatever was the deficiency that made him leave was the same deficiency that had attracted freeloaders to his life. God help me. Because freeloaders enjoyed his crazy season. I said freeloaders enjoyed his crazy season. And can I tell you this? You might want to write this down. Because free crazy people will be more than happy to let you be crazy. God help me in here. Now, now they couldn't have been his friends because real friends don't let you waste your life they don't let you spend it all and they don't let you throw it all away it couldn't have been real friends because real friends push you back to the father's house before it gets too late and i don't know how you feel about it but this is a good place to shout that god didn't let you wander too far that you couldn't get back home anybody in your house this morning you ought to lift your hands and say lord i thank you that you didn't let me get too far away that i couldn't get back home some father this morning you ought to be able to tell your children the story how god allowed you to wander but he didn't let you wander too far that you couldn't get back to your father's house somebody ought to be able to testify that you've had seasons where your mind drifted you had seasons where your heart got confused you had seasons where the eyes looked in the wrong direction but you're not praising God for your straying you're praising God because he never let you get further than your home and instinct could bring you back to your father's house. I wish you'd find somebody in your house and you grab them and tell them I strayed. Tell them I wondered. Tell them I wrestled. Tell them I was unsettled. But don't judge me because you've been in the same boat too. The good news is that, that look at us now. We're back in the father's house. The son asks for his inheritance. But then he has to leave because he can't manage immaturity staying close to the father he can't feed unsettledness and stay close to the father he can't satisfy wild appetites from his father's house you do know that there's some things you just can't do in your father's house one of the best ways to protect yourself when you're in a season where you are spiritually unsettled is at least make yourself one promise i don't know why i'm feeling like i'm feeling but i'm determined that i'm going to work it out from inside my father's house. You got to tell somebody I'm not leaving my father's house. I'm staying right here because I'm too scared that if I leave the father's house, I'll have no way to control how I feed my unsettled appetite. Look at somebody and tell them stay in the house. Stay in the house and let the Lord work it out. And I'll tell you why because you've made no requests. You've made no mistake. You've made no decision that you can't recover from. You have not done anything. You have not said anything. And you have not been anywhere that can destroy your status as a son or a daughter. Church folk don't know where to shout because the grace God has given you is called time. Somebody say time. And you can always get back home to the father i've got witnesses because moses declares that you can get back home from the desert 
David says that you can get back home from a scandal. Uh, Elijah says that you can even get back home when you thought about suicide. Jeremiah says that you can even get back home when you've already resigned. Ezekiel says that you can get back home when you're stuck in a valley. Peter says you can get back home even though you've already professed your denial. John says you can get back home when you've been isolated to an isle from prison called Patmos. Stephen says you can get back home from a stoning pit. Jesus says you can get back home from the cross because it's all at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart just rolled away it was there by faith that i received my sight and i don't know about you but i'm happy all the day happy father's day good day y'all may the lord bless you real good but the text tells us that the son decided that i'm gonna make my way back home his clothes were torn and tattered he got pig mud all over him his card has been revoked his car has been impounded his friends have rejected him but somehow he remembers the directions back to his father's house step by step with his stinky and lost self step by step with his wasteful self he makes his way back to his father's house and the text declares that the servant sees him coming and runs to tell his father when the father realizes that it is his son in the distance he hollers tells his servants go get and kill a calf somebody go get his robe somebody go get my ring and even though the father thought that his son may have died the good news of the story is that he never gave anyone else the robe that he had designed for his son and he never gave anyone else the ring that he designed for his son and God sent me here to tell you this morning that you may have strayed away from the father's house but he's never gave away your blessing he's never gave away your robe he has not given away your crown he has not given away your ring but if you come back to the father's house he will restore to you everything that was wasted good day y'all may the lord bless you i feel like shouting because i'm so glad that we serve a god who will restore the years that the canker worms has taken say yes say yes grab somebody for the last time and say stay in the house
Make it love it. I put it all in his hand. 